You can live anywhere on the planet and do this style of art. He's gorgeous, yep. If you did it down like this? Yeah, looking down. My name is Lisa Herman. I'm a marine artist here in the Upper Keys, and I'm the owner and operator of Gallery of the Arts. The Keys is definitely an influence on my art, hands down. I mean, you can't ask for a better color palette than what we have here. I really like where the, the horizon line, I'm just in love with it. I mean, you get to see it so often here and not being in the Keys, when, whenever, I, whenever I leave the Keys, I don't realize how rare it is to see that horizon line, you know? And it, it's, it's just so comforting to see that. So whenever I feel like painting, I feel like that's got to be there for me. It stabilizes it. And when you look at the horizon on the ocean, it never looks the same. There's something simple and, you know, primitive about it. It's, it's cool. And I think that's what brought me into the Gyutaku process. It's very straightforward. It's very clean. Gyutaku is very interesting. Originally, it started back in the 1800s in Japan, and it was a way fishermen could record their catches, basically before cameras existed. Um, and because of this interesting layout and how they recorded it, it started to turn into its own form of art. This is neat. He's cute. Each fish has their own little characteristics and personalities. Or like this guy's little character, he's missing a little part here and a little part there. So each time I do it, I get a little bit more familiar with the fish and I make sure I pull up all those little different dorsal fins in there to make sure their tails like as fanned out as it can. I try to capture the fish like as lit up and excited as it is in the wild. This one's perfect sized. I like to get a picture of the exact fish that I've printed so when I come back to the gallery I can make sure all of its little spots, all of its eyes are exactly the way this one looked. Some of the mutton snappers have really, really cool um, teal, like blue around their eyes. And I always wanna make sure I wanna get it just right. It's like their little signature. Each fish that I do Gyutaku prints of, 100% um, will be something that the, everybody can share and eat. I'm not ever gonna take a fish that has just the purpose for printing. It has to be utilized beyond that. So when I am doing that, I'm thinking about, you know, this fish, we're going to eat it afterwards. So I only use very non-toxic, water-based um, acrylic paints. I, I do it traditionally where I use a very, very black acrylic paint, and I always do the fish in black. And when I pull it off, after that, I do the embellishments. Some clients want just the eye embellished. Some clients want the whole fish uh, embellished in color. Um, some want it just black and white as is. So there's a lot of different stages and, um, and ways you can, and you can do this fish. Every time you pull that paper off, it's like a big surprise. Yep, perfect. As I was exploring doing the Gyutaku on fish, I thought, you know, it'd be really cool to do it on other nature. One of my friends has a, a big, beautiful butterfly garden, so I asked her if she ever finds any of the butterflies that passed on, didn't make it. Um, let me, you know, see if I can somehow make them live on forever. And uh, got my hands on a couple butterflies, and they turned out magnificent. I do use different inks instead of the paint. The paint was a little bit thick on the butterfly, so I use just Sumi inks. And uh, now it's, I mean, I've tried dragonflies, bumblebees, different leaves, different seashells. I'm always experimenting with um, different style canvases. Like, I love my stretched white canvas, but there's something exciting and challenging about painting on oyster shells. I've painted on sand dollars, the swordfish, and now doing the gyutaku is very, very interesting where it's not your basic plan. You know how to go about it. Some different shells, some different um, bills, they kind of tell you what they want. And they, you kind of explore what that shape is and what that can house for that specific piece of nature.